Eric Flo, what's up? How are hey, you? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Welcome I'm to okay. CJ. Are you live off the floor? Thank you guys We're so for glad to me. have you. Um, so right away. So okay, side story. Sure. When we when I was introducing the team to you, I probably interchanged different names, at least four different names. Wow. Okay. It's like yeah, Eric Flo Child, Flo Child, Eric Flo, Flo Child, Flo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. That's fair. So mm -hmm. I know right now, 2020, Eric Flo. Yes, I go by the name of Eric Flo right now. Eric Flo. Okay. Eric Flo Child is the name people know me as. They see me on the street. They still call me that. Eventually, we're going to get to Eric Flo. Eric Flo. We're all going to get on that train eventually, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. No, I think that's really cool. It's yeah. the evolution. Um, I've been privy to see you start from before high school, yeah. really. Yeah. And see you grow and then to see your name also evolve as well. So mm -hmm. I let me know. Like, Let us know. What's the history? I mean, I think... It's it's funny because when I was Eric Flo Child, like as a kid coming up with that name, I took that name from Music Soul Child. Like I straight jacked it to be honest. I was like, oh, I'm not a singer, but I do rap, so I'm just gonna call myself Flo Child. And then, actually, my name was just Flo Child, and it was spelt kind of weird. Like the O was a zero and the I was a one. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. I definitely remember that. Yeah. But that's like the <laughs> first rendition of Flo Child. And then the people I started, I started working with some guys, and they were like, you gotta change your name, like. This doesn't look cool or whatever. <laughs> Funny enough, when you look at the, the rappers now, everybody's got all types of weird things going on in their, in their I might have been ahead of my time, sure. to be honest. I think that's but, what, yeah, that was happening. But yeah, I mean, I went from going to, to Flo Child to Eric Flo Child, uh, Eric with a K, mm -hmm. which people get confused about too, mm -hmm. because my name is spelled with a C, so mm -hmm. they don't know why I would spell it with a K. But it's because I'm an artist and sometimes you change your name. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I became Flo Child with the O and the one, then Eric Flo Child with with Eric with the K, and now I'm just Eric Flo because um, no longer a child. <laughs> I don't think right, you know. What yeah, I mean, I grew yeah. up a little bit, and beyond that, when my name was made, obviously Flo meant like rapping, and 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 and, and it was about like rapping and bars and verses and stuff like that. But my journey as an artist just took me more into of a more, I guess it's like more of a spiritual realm. So like Flo to me now means more like essence mm. and. Um, just, uh, you know, things like that, like, like, you know, flow, like energy, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. Frequency, frequency, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Do you see yourself possibly going through another shift name, name wise? Um, I don't know if I'm going to change my name again, but because I do produce, maybe I'll just venture out into another producer moniker or something right. eventually. But even then, I don't know. My name is Eric. I do flow. I've been doing that forever. I don't think that's <laughs> going to like change. You know? I love that. And thank you that you mentioned it. So Eric, you are not just a rapper, lyricist. Uh, you're right. also a producer. Yeah. Like eventually I just ended up. Uh, I mean, I've always had a knack for like, you know, arranging music and because and, I, I was mixing my own stuff a lot of the time mm -hmm. uh, when I when I was making music. And I think eventually I just naturally started thinking like, what if I was just doing a bit more of the production, you know, like. So, yeah, I think I, I, I don't know. It, it's it's interesting, like being an artist and, and somebody who's heavily into lyrics and, and writing and, and, and hearing that part of the music when I was younger. It's weird that now a lot of the the the, the like a lot of what music is. Like a lot of the stuff that I like, how do I put it, man? It's like beats now. It's like it's taking, it's like replacing how I feel about lyrics at this point. Like wow. I love music so much more. Not more, but it's just, I guess because it's a new journey for me. It's just more appealing right now or more interesting. You know what I mean? Oh no, for sure. Yeah, that's well said. Yeah, yeah, well said. So, my question is, do you feel now that? Well, first of all, are you doing more of, are you writing to now more of your own production? I feel like I am, to be honest. Okay, and cool. that's a very, I never saw this happening, to be right. honest. Like, really. Like, I've, I had a bunch of friends who produce, and they were all really dope producers. But something in me is just becoming a little bit more specific about, like, the, my message or, or my sonics, even. And I think, for whatever reason, I'm just the person who can explain that yeah. the most I, I mean I, maybe because it's my vision or my thoughts or whatever but yeah um, you know not to say that my friends aren't still giving me beats it's just you know it's just a lot more convenient too when you can just make your own music like for sure it just for feels sure. like everything's coming from a more of an authentic place even but. I feel like as a listener hearing your music evolve mm. from rapping on music that you were being re you're receiving right, from right, other producers right. to now you writing and yeah. to your own music it's different definitely it sounds more it's just, whole. It's just yeah like it feels just more intrinsic to like mm. to, to 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 who i am as an artist and 
it's weird how like melodies and frequencies can kind of speak to who a person is you know mm-hmm. what i mean like you hear somebody's sonic space and it really just accounts for like who they are a lot of the time so right. i'm i'm very happy that i you know took a step forward and decided to take a little bit more control over that right. um and again, of course, with hip hop, sample based music is like huge for me. And I just love the challenge of, you know, finding vinyl records or flipping samples. And and, and yeah, man, it's just a, it's just part of my um, art form at this point, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Do you see yourself producing more for others? Um, I've done it and I, you know, um, I, I like it, mm-hmm. but I think I'm, I'm happiest when I'm making my own music, to be honest. Right. I mean, for sure, I, I want to venture out and produce some more for people, but um i think as far as like what i'd want to do for other people more than anything is i think it's the songwriting part Mm -hmm. like i love songwriting it's just i don't do it that much with my own music like my own music feels a little bit more personal and not as imaginary if that makes any sense like it's it's like it's just very very intentional what i have to say with my pen but when i'm speaking for other people it just frees me up and takes me out of my own world that kind of thing right so yeah very cool so so many different directions first of all um, for our viewers watching this, yeah. you've attended Ryerson mm-hmm. at a point in your life, mm-hmm. <laughs> and now you're back uh-huh. here <laughs> performing on Ryerson grounds. But before we go into you being a student of Ryerson before, um, what's really interesting is that you do something that I don't see a lot of specifically hip hop artists do okay. and producers, okay. and it's that you busk. Oh, yeah. And I love that because I find that busking takes there's a level of humility Mm -hmm. and courage for sure and i just don't see it happening with rappers (laughs) yeah and i think it has a lot to do with you know the ego different things yeah so i just want to like tell me your Mm -hmm. journey in getting there well i don't know i think for me live performances have been like the most appealing part of like like hip-hop music for me like i love getting on stage and performing for people and you know, it's one thing to record, but it's just sometimes it feels weird to me because like no one's in the room half the time. Like I just love that give and take, like that energetic exchange that you have with people um, when you're performing. So, you know, like f- going along my journey, I've just always found myself happiest on stage. It's just been that way. And people seem to react to me the most once they see me perform. Like it's just something about that actual physical, like taking over physical realms, like space in the time where digital realm like digital is everything you know what i mean like i love the idea of just being in your face um so yeah busking for me is just a way to sort of just um do that you know what i mean like i love the idea of being in front of people and performing my music and giving people a message and 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 seeing um the value in that in real time you know what i mean like one thing I try to tell people right now is like think about and again you're right hip hop artists are not out there like that like I don't really see them and I and it's exactly because of the reasons I think you said like you know people have egos and pride and it just it, it could look weird if you're yeah. doing it for sure yeah. but for me it's just something that's very natural and uh, and I've seen it work and um, before I even started busking in Toronto I drove to New York first I went to New York one time and I just decided I was going to perform in the, str- the train stations in New York and nice. just like. Um, get started there and be somebody completely different so by the time i came back to toronto i was already prepared to like perform at home you know what i mean that's 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 what happened um and yeah like real quick it's just think about like we're in this digital realm where streaming is everything and like you know if you if you stream a song a hundred times you might not even get like a dollar from that but i go outside and play a song for 20 seconds and sometimes it's like yeah you know what i mean Uh, so when i start seeing the math i'm like oh okay like this is worth it for me to do as an artist especially when you know it's paying you <laughs> you know yeah. like it kind of is like if, if if you do it the way that you know people like for whatever reason they just seem to you know let you know that you're doing a good job i think so we were i know we were having a conversation and laughing about yeah. how you've you've rocked so many stages yeah. you you've done so much and that when people are just meeting you for the first time busking yeah it's like Eric, yeah. I hope that you continue. <laughs> Have you yeah. ever performed on a stage before? <laughs> for sure. Again, like being on the street performing, like that for for some people that looks like you just might not know. Yeah. Like maybe this is your first time or maybe right. you're just trying to like get started or like, <laughs> you know, I, the energy is weird. Like there are people who kind of get like, oh, he might be just like a professional performer who likes to do this versus like, oh, he's like a struggling rapper or whatever the case is. Like I get those perspectives, but it's like, I really just love performing. Yeah. Um and yeah, like I do it because because it's part of part of me and and 
and yeah like i appreciate the support of course but like please don't look at it as like like i hope he's okay like i'm fine <laughs> you know what i mean like i'm yeah. doing all right like yeah you no, know for I'm, sure. not, I'm not the millionaire but like <laughs> I, I i do okay right know? right no i love that it, it really does stand out it does and um it's it's one of the things of why I wanted to invite you into this yeah. because it's not something that I find a lot of rappers are doing yeah. and it puts you on a different level. Well, for sure. thank you. And the thing is, like, above all else, just being able to express yourself that way. Like, for me, like, I go on the street and I'm, like, expressing myself. Like, yeah, I'm performing, whatever, but I just feel like I'm getting an opportunity to literally be myself. And the fact that that, you know, equates to, like, value is what's blowing my mind about this whole experience is like because if if i would like i do that for free i rap at home i rap anywhere you know what i mean like i've i've done free shows you know what i mean so like seeing it all is like wow like i could just take everything into my own hands and have my value be reflected while i'm being myself while i'm promoting myself as an artist while i'm experiencing toronto it's just too many reasons to do it at this point you know what i mean and it's funny because i'm hearing people say that they're inspired to to get on the street and do it as well and i would love to see that in toronto that'd be very interesting where Again, you're in a physical space, and now you're presenting your product to, to, to people like face to face instead mm-hmm. of on the internet. And um, I mean, I, it'd be cool if hip hop could. I mean, hip hop was that. That's why it's so confusing for me yes, too, right? Because yes. it's like we were on the street yep. performing this music. Yep. So that's another reason why I decided to bust. Because it's like, well, this just feels natural to like hip hop's actual like culture and origins. So yeah, yeah little tidbit. But I love that. Yeah. yeah. So okay, now bringing it back. Uh, let us know, like, what was your experience here at Ryerson? Mm-hmm. And if anything, because I know it doesn't always work that way, but would you say there's anything that you took from that experience that has that has helped you mm-hmm. in your artistry now? Um, what I loved about my experience at Ryerson as a, as a radio and television arts student, I think, was just the access to, like, the equipment, to be honest. Like, as a, as a young student who didn't really have, you know, much money, um, because I spent it on being a student, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, actually, there was, there was access to studios and and equipment and gear and all types of stuff, and a lot of the times, I would just be at Ryerson, and, and, you know, we had these cards, and we could stay overnight, and, you know, I would just be in the studio all night, go to class, go to the studio, go to class, and then go, I'd be at school for maybe two days before I go home or something, you know what I mean? Like, those are the very developmental times for me as an artist, because, you know, it's that 10,000 hours concept. Like I got, a, I think I, I had a chance to, to do a lot of those hours at Ryerson and really master my craft. And because I was taking radio and television arts, it sort of just was, you know, it, it was, it, it kind of matched with what I was doing as an artist. Like, you know, it's not like I was at school for business. Well, even that would have worked. But right, I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Like just the idea that I'm doing something that's relevant to, to my, my passion. So, you know, I, I took audio mixing courses at Ryerson, right. um, obviously video production courses and stuff like that. So like all of those things you're going to need as an artist. So, if, you know, I feel like uh, if I didn't go to Ryerson, maybe I would have figured it out a different way. But I'm just I'm glad because, you know, on top of that, I, you know, met a bunch of people. Um, I performed at Ryerson a bunch of times, too. So nice. it's like it was like a win, 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 win situation right. for sure. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Mm-hmm. So do you. I, something I observe is when you have artists who are heavy performers, like they yeah. spend a lot of their time performing, um, they may not spend much time recording. Right. Or maybe they just don't like it. Right. You know, and then vice versa. You have a lot of artists that live in the studio, yeah. but you hardly ever see them live. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it's hard balancing the two? For me, yeah, a little bit. You know, again, as somebody who loves performing live and because I've caught sort of like, a, you know, a, caught a lick, so to speak, with this busking thing, it's mm-hmm. like, you know recording for me isn't as as important because it right. feels like my brand and everything that's working for me is is it's happening in real time live on the street mm-hmm. so you know i love writing because at this point i'll write new music and i'll skip the recording process and just perform it outside nice. you know what i'm saying yeah. which is cool cuz sometimes people who actually know some of my catalog are like what song is that like what is this like you haven't put this out yet so it's creating this weird sort of anticipation in a weird in a different way mm-hmm. um but I definitely need to get back to recording. Like I'm a, you know, an artist who needs to have records for people to listen to when I'm not in their face. Like I get mm-hmm. that part, mm-hmm. but it's just not that important, but I'll get to it, but it's just not that important, <laughs> but I'll get to okay. it. Okay. For all the listeners listening, yeah. he will get to it, but it's also not that important. <laughs> it's not that serious, but I will, I will. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You will get to See it. See you on the street, man. Like I'm, that's the thing that, with 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 being an, an artist and recording and like sometimes you're being forced to make these records you're being forced to make certain kinds of records and it's like 
I don't know if my experience is more like I'm writing what I feel and I'm going outside and performing that and getting paid. I'd rather do that, to be honest. But again, I will get to the recordings because, you know, at some point I need to convert those guys back to the digital space. I know that. So. That's actually really exciting. Um, so do you, as we're talking about song releases and mm-hmm. whatnot, today you performed for us two songs, mm-hmm. Power and mm-hmm. Bold, mm-hmm. put them together. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought it was actually one song word <laughs> and i love that it was two separate songs yeah so let us know break it down for us the inspiration everything with both of those songs okay well power uh the first half of the record that that i did today um i think i use just that one word title just because i felt like there was power in vulnerability there was power in being able to like own your story and that song is just kind of like about that i think i you know, I started off by saying how to let you win. You know, vulnerability been killing me since I was 10 because I just remember being young and trying to be somebody who was like open and, and, and you know, sharing his story. And, you know, the I guess the way I grew up, that wasn't necessarily like accepted or um, honed or whatever the case is. So, yeah, power is just really, really just speaking to that, like, you know, giving my chance giving myself a chance to be vulnerable and um, let the audience know that I'm ready to just be a little bit more upfront about who I am as a person. And one thing about me as an artist for sure that I feel about myself, it's like I'm super, I feel like I have this like anonymous sort of like, you can't like, like have this like enigma, like sort of like nobody really knows who I really am just yet. You know what I mean? Just cause I've been figuring that out myself. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, power was just an opportunity to just say, look, I, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. You know what I mean? Like I'm ready to open up a little bit more to people. Um, and yeah, bold is just, I guess, an extension of that. And that's probably why I put them together for this, for this, uh, performance. Um, yeah, bold. I, I just remember producing that, that joint and just feeling like, oh, I like it. It's got like a bit of like a rock edge to it. It's not just all the way hip hop. It's got that like alternative sort of vibe. And um, and yeah, that's what kind of made me, you know, do a little sing song thing in the beginning, which I never, ever, 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 ever do. But I mean, you call me, so I'm like, let me just try something different, you know. So hopefully we got like, you know, decent enough takes of that because, yo, like, you know, I've never done that. Um, but yeah, it just gave me a chance to feel a little bit more free when I make music like that. That doesn't sound completely like hip hop. It, it kind of lets me feel like I can experiment mm-hmm. a little bit more. So um, and that's hip hop to me anyway. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's not hip hop. I'm just saying you know what things sound like now. So it definitely sounds a little different. Um, and yeah, it's just about being bold and feeling like, yo, like, again, I know who I am. I've been an artist for this many years. And, you know, Toronto is definitely a very competitive landscape when it comes to having people like, you know, pay attention. And, you know, I, I think for me, I just want to talk about, I mean, as far as this song is concerned, the song talks about not caring too much about um, you know, fitting in with the crowd and, and being okay with isolation from time to time. Even though in the song you'll you'll hear lyrics where it sounds like I'm struggling with that. You know, mm-hmm. like if only you would come around a little more. It's kind of mm-hmm. like me saying like go away, but like don't. You know, it's that right. whole struggle with people. And um, but yeah, like at the end of it, I'm just saying you got to be bold because if you want what you want, like obviously you're gonna have to go for it in a particular sort of fashion, right. especially in hip hop. So yeah, I think you know those are the two records. I can't wait to put those out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to record those <laughs> properly. Yeah. Um, you, I'm so, you touched on exactly what I wanted to mm. dive into. What I also appreciate about your artistry is that you're not afraid to experiment yeah. with your sound. And the fact that you're now producing your sound, right. it's like you have even more room. Sky's the limit. Yeah. Exactly. So my question is, I guess not really a question, but if there's room to speak more on what that process has been like with it's like hearing your music, it's still, you hear still the tradition, the mm-hmm. boom bap, you hear mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But it's also, there's a lot of experimentation there. For sure. It doesn't sound like the hip the hip hop or rap that's in Toronto. Right. Like, it def- yeah, like it's nah. nothing right. at all. Right. F- far left. Word. And exactly. I love that. Thank you. That's why you're here. Mm-hmm. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> so what was yeah. that journey like, that struggle? Um, I, I don't know. Because like, when I, when I really think about that, like where does that come from? I... I I know that hip hop for me is like, it's the base for sure. It's the foundation. And that's been further reinforced by like just certain experiences that I've had, like certain people that I've met and like, just, you know, like, um, it just kind of said like, nah, hip hop, it, it, it's, it's, it's more than just music. It's a culture. It's like a lifestyle. So like, that's you. Like, even when I'm not making music, if I'm editing videos or something, there's just like a hip hop sort of element, like a feel um, to me when I'm doing anything. So I think that's why even if I'm, trying to make music 
um, that's going to be there as a foundation. But I know that I am definitely somebody who's open minded and experimental naturally. Like I'm looking at life like everything that's been presented to us isn't necessarily what is, you know what I mean? I want that to be reflected in the music and I want to challenge my listeners to be like, yo, what was that? Like, you know, if you can feel that there's a hip hop element, but something that beyond that, like I want you to feel that because it just means that, uh, you know, we're having a musical conversation that, that extends beyond like genre. It's just, now we're just talking like feels and frequencies again. And, you know, I'd, ra- I'd much rather do that than, than make the stereotypical like, oh, I hear that. And this is obviously like a hip hop beat, you know, um, don't get me wrong. I love boom. Like I'll make boom bap beats all day, but like, I just love when I get to like tinker a bit more and, 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 you know, um, just show people that we can take this somewhere else, you know, without necessarily losing ourselves completely. Yeah, for sure. Well said. So as far as, again, releases yeah. and everything, do you feel like you're in a place where you're working towards any sort of project or? I mean, yeah, again, busting has been so alluring that it's taken me out of the studio a bit, but I'm, I'm definitely back and recording again. Um, those two songs were, uh, you know, a testament to that. Like, uh, again, they're not fully recorded yet, but they have been written and, and I have a lot more music that's been written that I just need to go in and record. So, um, yeah, very soon there should be some stuff uh, coming out on all those platforms that you know about, Spotify and whatnot. Right. Um, and yeah, this should be a project soon, a couple. Um, that Those two songs were from a project. It's like a little EP that I'm working on. I think there's like four other songs that are on there. Um, that should be out at some point. I can't tell you when. Oh, no. And I, that, I like that you can. That. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the magic of it. Because exactly. even that question is not one of those like, right. where's the music? You it's definitely I mean? not yeah. that. No. Yeah, for sure. I love the space that you're in. You're glowing. You know, it's oh. like you're in <laughs> your zone. Right. So for anyone listening, you, you'll get the music when you get the music. Yeah. Just see, <laughs> yo, come out, young and done that. Just come outside. Exactly. Come outside and see me. Like the weather's about to get better. Um, and it's, it's just going to be a crazy experience. Like I love. Like, you know, starting, like, when I did this busking thing last year, um, like, it was, like, the end of the summer, so the weather wasn't the greatest by the end of, like, you know, the stretch that I was doing it for, but, you know, the weather is definitely about to get better, and I'm just so excited about being able to present new music outside and have people um, just consistently see me out there, like, yo, this guy is hustling, um, yes, but I'm also just, you know, expressing myself and and being an artist like for real for real and uh, i just i appreciate the fact that toronto's been you know supporting me you know like and, and as somebody who kind of feels you know as an alternative artist so to speak that sometimes there isn't space for me or whatever it's like when you go outside it's like a completely different experience it's like the people that you wouldn't even expect are the people supporting you too on top of that right so like when you're a hip-hop artist and you're thinking of the hip-hop culture and you're thinking about like who is actually like like, what does that look like? You know, sometimes we we box ourselves in as far as, like, you know, the, we're thinking that people might look a certain way if they're appreciative of hip-hop culture. But it's like, no. When I'm, out, when I'm outside, it's like little babies to older, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter who it is. It's like that energy is felt. So you got to take, take that into account as a, as a hip-hop artist. It's like... Obviously, it's a black genre and all of there's all of that going on too. But it's like, yo, know, hip hop is so universal. Like, you can't get caught up in like any of that stuff when you're when you're when you're thinking about it on that le- level. And again, as somebody who's into essence and and frequency and energy, it's like hip hop is that vehicle for me. And being outside is is like the only way for me right now to exchange that kind of energy authentically. Um, until then we'll see i mean i obviously got to do shows and get on stages and stuff again too but you know it, it's got to it, if it doesn't feel as good as me being outside yeah. it doesn't even matter to me right now that's real yeah yeah and actually that is one of my final questions is mm-hmm. for any shows that you choose to to book going forward yeah um i can tell that it's like not like you're in a place where it's like hey i'm booking conscious like consciously i'm choosing i'm exactly. just any old show exactly especially with what you've already been experiencing exactly. without those shows i'm telling you like again being on the street you find you figure out your worth so when mm. people are trying to tell you tell you the math right it's like i've i can go outside and do that you know what i mean like on my own so like you yeah. better talk to me like this is gonna make sense exactly. because otherwise like yeah there's a reason why i'm saying no at this point it's like right. I, I could just Go outside and get it right now. Like I really can. No, that's real. Um, yeah. I don't know why I'm saying that, but it's no, true. but that's, just, I'm glad you did. Yeah, just, you know, very well pr- promoters and venues in Toronto. Like that's another reason I'm outside. It's like I just can't deal with like 
there's still politics. There's still that whole like you know hip hop in venues. There's still mm. that like ooh, even though it's like the highest selling genre of all time yep. at this point, it's, it's obviously still, the most you know appealing yep. sort of thing going on right now. But there's still this apprehension around artists being in certain spaces, especially in a city where you know the arts is being you know regarded as the, such an important thing. It's like, yeah. but still, I'm not really seeing how all of that is you know being implemented. Um, right. But again, you go on the street by yourself and you take your speaker and your mic none of that is an issue like right. you, you run your own set you know what i mean so yeah cool. so going for any shows that you do choose that you're like yeah i feel good about this yeah. show what is what what do you feel are some things that you want to take into it from your experience busking for yourself um i think for one because my busking show is pretty ill you know what i mean like i like it so it's like if if i'm gonna do a show for booking me you know, the one thing I don't do outside is perform with my live mus- musicians, right? right? So, yeah. like, I would definitely love if um, if if I have this busking sort of experience that I can give people, if they're seeing me on stages, I would love to make it, like, a separate thing. Like, right. you're seeing me with live musicians, and we're just... Because uh, that's, that. you know, before I was busking, I was definitely doing that, performing with live musicians and stuff, but I just got caught up in my own realm with this busking thing. Um, that would probably be the main difference. Is like, can you can you support me and, and five musicians so we can do a great show? If not, yeah, just see me outside, man. Like, <laughs> see me come outside. on, come on, Toronto. You know, like, <laughs> <Nice>. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having for I was gonna say for having us. Thank you for <laughs> for being here and for allowing us to hold space for you. Man. And um, yeah, for sitting and talking with us and mm-hmm. just allowing us to pick your brain because I feel like you're offering perspectives that many other artists, whether they are rappers or not, um, whether they're in hip hop or not, there's so many gems to take away about like just finding yourself. For sure. And being free in that. For sure. And I appreciate yeah. that. And yeah, like, and on that note, it's like, yeah, like I, I just hope that Toronto uh, sees itself as a city that has the potential, again, to represent art and hip hop on like such a global scale. Like the world is in Toronto, right? Like the world is in one place in Toronto and we have an opportunity to really just capture uh, you know, a, a very authentic hip hop energy and, and share that outward with the world. And I know we're doing it already, but I think this this busking thing and like, you know, 2020 in general, it just feels like it's going to be a different time for hip hop in Toronto. So I'm, 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 you know, I'm definitely looking forward to contributing con- to contributing to that. And yeah, man, thank you for having me. Um, I've known you forever. So this is super dope. You know what I mean? Like, some of the questions here. I'm like, okay, pretend I don't know you. Nah, you're talking like you know questions? me, so what are we going to do? Yeah. Thank you. Peace. Hey.